So, um, this is a, a video about my um, variable portfolio. So, um, I decided two years ago, in the middle of 2011, to uh, allocate 50% of uh, the portfolio uh, to a variable portfolio, 50% uh, of the gold star portfolio that I'm publishing on the website. Um, to allocate half of that to a variable portfolio uh, to speculate. Huh? Speculate is just a a um, a um, de dejorative term for investing huh? uh, for most people. Though I uh, I I I find uh, that there is a difference between investing and speculating. Uh, I think investing is um, always uh, um, uh, valuing uh, secur security um, above growth yeah? and so investing always uh, leads you to a diversified portfolio uh, but uh, speculation is uh, something different um, um, growth um, is certainly at an equal standing uh, than, uh, than security and um, you are uh, taking bets, eh? so you are taking bets in the market, you try to outperform the market, uh, whereas with investing, um, not per se. Eh? Uh, uh, some people try to outperform the market, but investing is sufficient if you just try to have the market average, like the permanent portfolio does. Um, so uh, in my variable portfolio where I speculate, I try to uh, outperform the market, and I've decided to do that with 50% of the capital of the Gold Star, Gold Star portfolio two years ago, and I decided to allocate it all to, uh, to the Roland van Damme portfolio, which was uh, very, very poor timing on my part because uh, the moment I did that, I started dropping uh, in 2011 with a serious correction um, that went somewhere around minus, was it uh, minus 15%, minus 20%, which, um, and I, I had already uh, followed Roland van Damme's portfolio, but for a smaller percentage of the, of the portfolio, so I, I had raised it and then the collapse came. So I had immediately a serious loss uh, of minus 5% for 2011 with my variable portfolio. Uh, the, 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 the year after that, 2012, uh, was last year, and I'm just going to take um, um, my portfolio in front of me so that I can uh, see the numbers. But uh, last year wasn't great either. Um, the variable portfolio performed only, uh, let's see, 3%, whereas the permanent portfolio, 8%. So actually... Uh, I didn't do well either, but I didn't lose um, only a little uh, because I estimate true inflation 5%, so 3%, that's a loss of 2% purchasing power. So that was 2012. Uh, gold uh, didn't do anything. Silver went up only 7%. Um, but then uh, at the end of the year of 2012 uh, and in the starting the middle of the year, I, I discovered Bitcoin, studied it for a few months, um, and took an initial position, which uh, which was only five percent of, of of the gold star portfolio, uh, and all the rest was still in Roland van Damme and uh, silver. Uh, so that means that uh, that was around uh, forty percent Roland van Damme, and then another five percent silver. Um, uh, that was the situation at the end of the year. Uh, total return was three percent. Um, of course, 2013, we know what happened. Bitcoin went to the moon. And um, right now, the variable portfolio has done very well, um, even though uh, I and many others took a serious hit uh, in their precious metals. Uh, so my Roland van Damme portfolio up until today has gone down around minus 12%. Uh, in 2013, my silver has dropped minus 20% in 2013 right now and uh, but bitcoins have gone up 970 percent so almost thousand percent so that's a tenfolding 
Um, and um, thanks to that, the, my total variable portfolio this year, and we are now the end of May, 31st of May, uh, now the, the variable portfolio is up 83%, which is um, an, uh, a very good uh, performance, especially since uh, half of the capital is in the variable portfolio. In the past, I have had several returns, uh, similar good returns with my variable portfolio. For example, in 2009 and 2010, I only had a silver position in my variable portfolio and it went up 2009 with 36% and 2010 with 86 percent so I, I have done equally well then but my allocation was only 15 percent to my variable portfolio and all the rest was to the permanent portfolio so I didn't make a lot of money so this year I, I, I have uh, I've succeeded in correcting that eh? so my good returns of the variable portfolio are also counting heavily because half of my capital is in it so the total return of the portfolio for the gold star portfolio right now is 45 percent uh, this year because my my variable portfolio did 83 percent and my permanent portfolio did eight percent so the average is 45 percent that's really very good however i have to apologize to um people that have following my work because um i was uh, really wrong uh, when it came to gold and silver the past two years eh? I made uh, a small mistake myself to buy even, uh, actually to buy some extra silver uh, when it was uh, almost uh, close to an all-time high uh, two years ago, uh, which has now halved in value. Uh, so that was a really bad move on my part. I, of course, allocated a lot of capital to Roland Van Damme right when he had uh, uh, done uh, very well. Uh, and right when uh, gold and silver were topping out. Uh, Roland Van Damme, his portfolio is mainly precious metals, uh, so a very big position in gold, uh, around 70-80% of that portfolio. So, um, so, so yeah, I lost money in precious metals uh, the past two years, and I have never uh, actually talked about, uh, that I remember, about f fearing a serious correction or... Um, I didn't see this one coming and um, and um, and it has costed me huh? and um, yeah I'm sorry for all those that uh, that have followed my um, my reasonings uh, that I have shared at the time uh, because it clearly did not work out huh? um, so yeah um, I, I don't think I'm um, responsible for your actions, but um, I do think that uh, I can um, at least sympathize with the losses that you have taken. Eh? Um, so, um, and of course, all my work is indeed opinion, and I'm going to share my opinion about precious metals today too, and I could be again very wrong in the future. So, do not follow my advice, uh, just uh, try to get something out of my reasoning, uh, see if it is true or false, and, uh, and I hope that you can make a better uh, informed uh, decision yourself. So, so, and of course I hope that if I'm wrong that you let me know. So today I have increased my exposure to uh, Roland Van Damme and silver. Um, uh, so, and I did that with profits from Bitcoin. Huh? So I've sold most of uh, my bitcoins, and um, um, have um, added most of it to uh, my permanent portfolio, and also to uh, to, uh, to 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 raising my my gold and silver position today. I have had serious doubts. Uh, it took me a long time to take this decision um, when gold silver uh, took a serious hit uh, over a month ago and uh, suddenly dropped by uh, in one, two days by uh, minus uh, 10, minus 15%. I, I lost uh, hope and confidence and trust in that investment for a few days. Um, I thought that this was um, clearly a signal in the market that, uh, that something isn't uh, right uh, in the gold and silver bull. And, um, 
and I started to doubt uh, my uh, my my uh, speculative uh, ideas. Uh, I started to doubt whether uh, gold, silver have another leg up, or actually are at the end, uh, or that 2011 was the end of a bull market. And actually, for gold, it started around 2000 and silver. So actually. 2011 was already 11 years uh, a bull cycle and that's uh, a long time already I mean in the 70s it also took uh, 10 years um, the bull cycle after which it started dropping for 20 years so uh, and in the Great Depression um, this, the, 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 the crisis also took uh, around 10 years um, of course gold as gold was fixed uh, but um, yeah so I was thinking actually the chances are actually high that uh, that the bull cycle is and has ended and that from here on the next 10 20 years it will become very painful and uh, you will have accumulate a lot of losses in gold and silver so, um, and since I discovered Bitcoin, I thought, um, well, actually, it's not worth any, it anymore, and I should exit um, my speculations in gold and silver. But uh, I have changed my mind um, because um, I think it's still a good bet to take. What convinces me most is that the current Actually, the prices when it hit the all time uh, the high in 2011 uh, for gold around $1,900 and for silver around $48 um, around that um, those prices were absolutely not as high as it went into the as the as the spikes in the 70s for example huh? in the 70s I think gold uh, hit uh, uh, an all-time high of was it eight hundred dollars or something and silver hit then also an all-time high of around fifty dollars so it's clear that silver didn't go up as much because it was now also fifty dollars and fifty dollars in 1980 is certainly not fifty dollars today if you count true inflation um, which is according to me five percent per year when something costs fifty dollars uh, in, in 1980 then today it should hit something like I don't know the number I didn't do the calculation actually I'm gonna just do that right now so um, um, no I'm not gonna do that uh, but um, it's certainly not 50 it's if you add 5% per year it's around uh, above $200 né? so so silver should at least have hit that to be comparable to, uh, to 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 a high in the 70s, and I uh, and this, and gold of course went higher eh? in in the in the 70s. It went up to somewhere around 800 dollars, and um, and um, and um, two years ago it went up to 1,900 dollars. So that's double, eh? around double. Uh, so, but actually, if you count true inflation, uh, that's not the same at all. Uh, it should be. Um, around five to ten thousand dollars for gold and then that is the same price as eight hundred dollars in 1980 eh? um, so so that's a strong argument to say that uh, we have not seen the end of this uh, because uh, indeed uh, it's typical for for bull cycles to go to comparable values eh? at the end of the cycle eh? uh, this was uh, also the case in the 1930s uh, with gold uh, gold went up uh, a lot in purchasing power not in dollar price because it was fixed but since there was a serious deflation prices went down uh, especially from real estate for example um, you could buy a lot with gold uh, a lot more than uh, two years ago um, so um, I think that uh, that's an, a strong argument that the bull cycle has not ended. Another, I think, strong argument is that uh, just risk reward. Since we have a serious correction today, 
Um, the prices are very cheap uh, if another leg up comes. Eh? So if we have indeed another final leg up, then the silver price will go from the current around $22 to indeed above $200. So that's, 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 that's a tenfolding eh, of your capital. And it will probably take only two, three years. Eh? And for gold, the same is true. Eh? Today it has corrected to around $1,300. So if it indeed goes up a final leg, it will be around five to $10,000 for gold. A, f a final leg up. Eh? Um, so, um, and indeed those valuations, so, so that means also a, a maybe not a 10 folding, but let's say a five, six, seven folding for gold. Um, so I think speculation is, 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 is actually estimating your chances. So I think it's only 50% chance that we get a final leg up because indeed it's already extended. It's already a long time that we had this uh, gold and silver bull cycle, uh, but um, it can be longer too. It, it's not like a written law that a bull cycle should end at uh, 10 or 12 years. No, mostly it has in the past, but it can be different today. So, um, but the chances are not very high. Huh? So I give it a 50% chance uh, that it will happen. Um, why still 50? Because mostly it wasn't in the past, so I, I should say only 30%, maybe or 20%. Uh, but I think uh, it's, it is still 50% chance because, well, the world looks different today uh, than it ha was in the 70s or in the Great Depression. Um, uh, what is very different today is, is the market intervention, which is a lot higher. And this is strange. Huh? This is really strange because normally the world improves does not get worse, but when it comes to government intervention in our financial system, it has become worse. Eh? Um, the amount of money printed uh, today uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, I think, and I don't have proof for that, is I think uh, higher than the amount of money printed in the 70s or in the 30s. Huh? So, so I think that's as a grave concern. And I think one proof of that is the interest rates, which have now gone down to never seen lows. Eh? And I think that's directly related to the amount of money that's being printed. Eh? What do they, they do with that money being printed is they buy government bonds. So all that money or mo most of that money goes to, um, to the state, which spends it and which is also a big loss eh, for the economy. Uh, and at the same time, the interest rates are manipulated lower. And so, um, yeah, um, 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 yeah, I lost my train of thought. But um, so I think the manipulation is higher today than it was in the past, which means that they are, ex that they are, that the crisis is going slower. Eh? because a crisis liquidates. Eh? If there would not have been a government intervention of such a grave, uh, uh, such a b large scale, many banks, almost all banks, would have gone broke immediately. And there would be an enormous, have been an enormous liquidation uh, when it comes to saving accounts. So these are all investments, eh? bad, most of them bad investments made by the banks, all that money is invested poorly and uh, had a lot of losses on it. And so um, then we would have had an, an enormous liquidation and, um, but, and uh, an enormous deflationary contraction, but after one, two, two years, like for example in Iceland has happened, uh, the crisis would be over and the economy would grow again. But uh, this has not happened, eh? so the, the intervention has been enormous. And intervention, although it looks on first impression that they help uh, the economy and help people, it's actually not true at all. They only help themselves. Uh, the money goes to uh, themselves. 
So basically they just steal a lot of money, which just puts a lot of extra. And with that money they, they, they bail out friends, eh? so they bail out banks, uh, which means that these institutions that are making losses just keep are kept alive and they continue to do the same, which is misallocating a lot of capital into, in, oh, into overcapacity. Eh? They continue today to invest large amounts of money in real estate, which, is, uh, which has an enormous overcapacity, eh? because we have had a 30-year boom in real estate, and uh, they're building everywhere. Eh? And uh, even though we had some real estate corrections in the US, eh, it dropped 30%. In the Netherlands, it dropped 20%. And then you have some eh, more serious corrections in Ireland and Spain, and uh, that's all true. But um, uh, there are many countries and many sectors within the company where there has not been a correction of real estate, and real estate prices are still very expensive. Where I live in Belgium, there has been no correction at all. It has continued to go up in Australia too, in Canada too, uh, and then even in the U.S. Uh, and in, uh, I, in the U.S., many, actually, it's just the lower-end real estate that has corrected a lot. The higher-end real estate is still very expensive, equally expensive as before the crash uh, in, in different areas. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the crisis has not done what it should do, eh? that is, um, depressing uh, real estate prices to such a level that people stop investing in it, stop building more. Eh? This has not happened. Hmm? Um, and bonds, I mean bonds, uh, we are in a debt crisis, eh? but bonds are devalued the highest they have ever been. So, I mean, it's like having a real estate crisis where real estate prices or the highest they have ever been. That's not a crisis, that's a bubble. Eh? So, so today bond prices of the, of the strongest governments like Germany and the US uh, are, are valued uh, the highest they have ever been with the lowest percentage, percentage uh, they give, have ever given, around 2% for 10 year, 10 year bonds. Um, so, so the crisis has not done its work yet uh, what should happen is that we have a lot more bond defaults, not just in the worst countries like Greece and, 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 and Cyprus. No, in, 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 <laughs> in the strongest countries we should have a bond crisis. Eh? Only like Germany and the US and Japan, the, 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 the interest rates should have gone up a lot, bond prices should have gone down a lot in value, eh? even also maybe not a default, but at least a serious correction in valuation. That's what the crisis should do. Eh? People should, should have acted and should have stopped lending uh, to the government and, um, and not increased their lending to the government, uh, which they have done up until today. Eh? So. So I think that government uh, bond values are low due to manipulation of the central bank. They just print money and buy government bonds, so that certainly adds to the bubble. But on top of that, I think the market is also still cooperating. All the money that is fleeing weak countries is not going to another asset. No, it just goes to another bond from a, a bigger state. Eh? So the money that flees out of Southern Europe just goes to bonds from, from Germany, basically, uh, or from northern countries like the Netherlands and, and Sweden and Finland. So, and, uh, so, so I think that that's another proof that the crisis is, has, is not over. Uh, um, but uh, still, there needs to be a lot of liquidation being done. Also, big big banks. I mean, sure, what what has happened in Cyprus, I think it's very positive. Uh, so um, they have um, uh, instead of bailing out the bank, they have said no, no bailout. Eh? We're not going to print money to uh, bail out the bank. 
So the people that are responsible will pay the bill, and those are the savers. Eh? Uh, savers are people that give their money to the bank and, um, and say, you can lend it out, go ahead. I don't care in what you lend it out, as long as you give me my nice interest. Eh? Um, uh, so, um, and the people invested in stupid uh, overcapacity investments, then uh, like real estate in Cyprus, and then uh, the market corrects, and then the banks lose a lot of money because people can't pay those debts. And now uh, they've said, okay, so the savers will pay the bill, and uh, the government will bail out according to the agreement, which is 100,000 euro, that we will bail out. So, um, so you will get that, but nothing more. Eh? I think that's a really positive thing. Uh, but, um, uh, but it was only in Cyprus, um, and then some small banks in the U.S. and in the, in the Netherlands have experienced the same. Um, where depositors lost money, but it's just on the sidelines. The main, uh, this has not happened at all for, uh, for the big banks. Eh? And um, I think uh, that should happen too, because the big banks have also a portfolio full of crap. Hmm? And, uh, and um, they, are, they are broke already, eh? um, but due to fraud, uh, due to putting in wrong numbers, uh, saying that an asset is valued higher than it really is, uh, uh, the books look better than they are in reality, and uh, they can still pay all people that ask their money back because the central bank prints money and lends it to the big banks, and so the big banks can continue to pay their bills even though they are broke. Uh. So, so that's the situation today. And I think this should, like, I think this, this, this still needs to, to, to be liquidated. I'm not expecting that all big banks will stop to exist, but um, I think it should be a lot more than what has happened. Like, in 2008, one bank, like, several banks went broke, but just a few, nine in ten banks, con big banks continue to exist, and... And in Belgium, for example, Dexia went broke. Eh? Um, uh, uh, Fortis went broke. Uh, so that's two banks, but we still have KBC. Uh, we still have uh, ENG. We still have, uh, it's, it's, that's Dutch, but it's big here too. Um, uh, we still have uh, Deutsche Bank, which is also here active. And then the smaller banks so, are oh, still existing. Argenta, Sera, like... So, um, some big banks have been uh, going, have gone broke, but even there, uh, the bill has just been um, paid by um, central banks and governments, and actually saving account holders didn't lose anything. Huh? So, I think that's another argument why I think that the, 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 the gold and, and silver bull cycle isn't finished yet. Um, another strong argument uh, for me is um, true inflation. Eh? Um, you have people, in the, uh, many times it's said that people are asked on television, like, okay, but Bernanke printed all this money and uh, we have not seen inflation, so you guys are wrong. Eh? And um, the, my answer to that is that uh, actually, true inflation has gone up since 2008. Eh? Uh, in 2008 it was high, eh? true inflation. Even though we had a serious crash in stock markets, the prices of consumer goods have continued to go up. And um, true inflation was also around 5% in 2008. But actually, since then, um, it has continued to be around 5%. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's actually trending higher uh, from what I see. Um, so so, so I, I have the impression it's going up uh, to 6%, 7% today. Huh? Although I don't have hard numbers for that, it's just an estimate. Huh? Uh, but I have looked up some consumer goods and the price increases are shocking. Huh? 
like just simple consumer goods going up at nine percent per year eh? so um so i i i i i think that the world is really out of touch with true inflation eh? and um the way that works is um um that um i i think chances are very high that it will get worse eh? because money printed comes that in the economy eh? except when it's parked with the ecb but only one in ten dollars or one in five dollars or euros that has been printed is still parked there all the rest is in the economy and it shows eh? um and um but i think that indeed the velocity of money will go up um so if you put just if people just park their money at home or on their saving well if people just value cash at home then it's not in circulation but once inflation picks up they start to value cash even less and less and it comes in circulation again and so it, it just accelerates and the central bank cannot uh, cannot um, cannot uh, at any point um, uh, dramatically reduce the money supply because it just creates a crisis immediately huh? so 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 i think that um, uh, inflation uh, is the future here um, and i found it funny when someone said um, yeah inflation is like it comes slowly and then suddenly i think that's true and why is that because the suddenly is when people realize actually true inflation is a lot higher and i'm gonna start acting like it eh? and so i'm gonna start spending and i want to get rid of my cash um, and so when that switch comes i think we will see some serious uh, that true inflation will pick up to 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 not to five percent today but I don't know, but it could easily go to 10%, 15%, um, and even 20%. Eh? And um, that's not hyperinflation, uh, but it's a, but you do that uh, only five years and you lost, uh, you lost uh, a lot of purchasing power in cash. So um, I think that at, in, in that time frame, you will see gold and silver explode. Eh? Um, to, to, to the highs that we have seen in the 70s and the Great Depression. Eh? So, um, so yeah, I think true inflation is seriously underestimated today already. And um, just using basic logic, eh? when you print money, you have inflation. Eh? It's not true that um, The argument that because you have a lot of debt going broke and eh, a lot of saving accounts ceasing to exist, a lot of money being um, uh, removed from the economy, that um, you can just print money and compensate and then it, it will not create inflation. That's not true because when a savings account is not money, a saving account is debt. Eh? So if I give my money to a bank and um, uh, I have now, let's say, 100,000 euro on my saving account, uh, I can spend that. Eh? I can pay people with that. Eh? But I'm not paying them with money. I'm paying them with credit. Eh? Because the money I gave to the bank is gone. The bank lent it out to someone else. Eh? And so, and if the... And if that someone else then says, okay, I'm also going to put it on a saving account, then you have two saving accounts of 100,000 euro, but actually we don't own it because the bank will lend it out to someone else again. Eh? So you can see that debt goes up, but the money in circulation does not go up when debt goes up. Eh? So actually the prices remain the same. When debt goes up, the prices remain the same because the money is not going up. So if you then say, uh, look, um, uh, the person that lent the 100,000 euro, he can't pay back because he's, he went broke, then I'm losing my saving account. So suddenly, I lost 100,000 euro in, 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 uh, in money, I think. I cannot spend it anymore because it's gone. But actually, I, I, what I lost is 100,000 euro in debt and someone else also and someone else also. And so we have a lot less mm, currency to spend, but actually the money in circulation is the same. So if then the central bank says, oh, you lost 100,000 euro, let me print some money and give it to you. Eh? 
then suddenly you actually double and triple the amount of money in circulation. Huh? Like if you pay uh, someone who lost their investment with pr money that is being printed, then, 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 then you, you increase the amount of money in circulation and, uh, and the prices will go up. Huh? Maybe not at the start because I just lost 100,000 euro. If I get 100,000 euro from the central bank, mm, probably I will just be a little bit more secure and maybe I don't put it on the bank, I just keep cash. And in that case, there is no inflation immediately. But as soon as I start spending that, there is double amount of money in circulation for the same amount of goods and services and prices double. Huh? So I think we can expect that huh? uh, just based on logic. So voila, I think I rambled long enough. Um, so that's my, uh, my, my arguments why I have increased my position in gold, Roland van Damme portfolio and uh, silver uh, to around 30% of my total portfolio and around uh, in my variable portfolio is the largest part. So because my variable portfolio is only 50%, so 30% is uh, uh, the biggest allocation. And um, um, uh, I think it's a really, it's a good bet to take. That doesn't mean that it will work out. Eh? It, we can, it can just not work out and we can have seen the end of it and the next 10 years it just goes down, gold and silver. Uh, that's possible, but I still think that it's a good bet to take today, even when I have, will be proven wrong. Eh? Um, I think that it was still worth taking that bet because I estimate a 50% chance of winning and Winning means up to tenfolding my capital over the next three years. Huh? That's good. The other 50% is losing and then I will lose 50%, 80% over the next three years. Huh? So I think that's a really good bet to take. Hmm? So that's why I'm doing that. So thanks a lot for watching and I'm looking forward to your uh, feedback if you have any. Bye.